You know, so this ice camping, it's not for everybody, and you definitely want to be particular about who you do it with. It's not, you know, you don't just invite anybody to go ice camping with you. I mean, if you don't like that person, there's quirks about that person that annoy you, it's going to be times 10 if you spend three days inside of a hub ice shelter. I can guarantee it. And so, like with Eric and I, you know, we grew up together. You know, we went to high school together. Eric graduated a year ahead of me. And so when we were in high school and college, we did a lot of fishing together. You know, Eric loved to fish and I loved to fish. Usually we, we always fished by ourselves because we could never find anybody that wanted to fish as much or as long as we did. And so then that's why we kind of gravitated towards each other. And so Eric and I did a lot of fishing growing up. And so, you know, I wanted to come out here and fish the Kakawea and I just wanted to come out here and stay in the hub. And some of it was just because it's one of my favorite places. It's a deal where you come out here in such a beautiful place. It's such a special fishery that when you get out here, you don't ever want to leave. <laughs> and so it's kind of appealing just coming out here and, you know, sleeping in the fish house where you, you know, you fish all day, you laugh and talk and eat for half the night, catch a few fish during the dark, get up in the morning, get up the next day and do it all over again. But uh, Eric has always been a good wingman. I mean, we've done a lot of uh, a lot of crazy adventures together over the years. And, and what's fun is you look at how far this has gone. When Eric and I were 18 years old, we'd come out and do this. And we're using homemade flip up shacks made out of plywood and blue tarps that were cold. I mean, the, the sunflower heaters that we used at the time were, you know, I mean, it was just, uh, it was it was borderline miserable, but we loved to fish so much that we didn't care or look at the stuff that we've got today and the comfort that we have when we're doing this. And this equipment's come a long ways. So what we've got here is basically a main river channel that comes in and intersects a, an old creek bed here. So we got a lot of deep water and a point that kind of comes out here. So we'll probably just punch some holes around here and see if we can catch some fish at the right at sundown. So it's pretty nice right now, but it's going to get cold tonight. It's going to get windy tomorrow. So we're going to bank this house up really good. And the big thing is Try to use snow if you can, just so it doesn't freeze down when it's time to leave. But uh, you definitely, you know, even around the door, you know, make sure that, you know, you don't bank up so high that that zipper is in the snow. And so make sure you bank up all the way around your house, which is oversized skirt is nice for that. Well, Jason called me a, a, a little while back and he had this, he had this great idea uh to fish bat like we were 16 again and uh you know growing up with jason we used to we had quite a number of adventures and a lot of our adventures were were kind of spur of the moment and and maybe a little sketchy sometimes so when he called me to do this and and said he wanted to go ice camping again except this time we were going to use you know a lot more modern equipment um, I was all, all for it. It was like he read my mind that ice camping is definitely something that I, that I really enjoy doing and, and with the, you know, the advances in equipment now, it, it's a lot more comfortable than sleeping in those old plywood uh, fish houses with a tarp over the top of them. The water clarity is still pretty good. I haven't noticed a lot of current up here, which some, some years you get a lot of a lot of current that comes into these spots and it seems like they'll move anything adjacent to these where the old river channel comes into is, is kind of like the first place that i always like to to target and then the flats kind of just directly adjacent to them or anywhere where the river channel will swing into shore my go-to spot is for depth is like 24 feet 24 25 feet and then just kind of bounce around from there what we found this fall was in the same day right before ice up you could catch fishing four feet of water pitching up shallow and then you could there we go and then you could catch fish out in you know 35 40 I think this one might be a Cisco go. feel like a good one a yeah, nice decent little fish is that our lunch <laughs> <Might> <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll eat this one, huh? Yeah, just... 
pounding it on that bottom again. So, you know, we're just using our hub as just kind of a base camp and we're just going out and doing a little exploring. There he is. There we go. Come on up here. Oh, fish is fighting now. What is it? Oh yeah, nice walleye. Come here. <laughs> that, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Got it right in the beak. Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. Look at that. Fish is just strong. That is cool. What do you think, Eric? Do we eat this one or we let it go? It's up to you. I'm confident we're going to get more. Yeah, I think we'll get more. Yeah, try a little over 20 inches. Good stuff. Good stuff. And it's nice out now. The forecast is we're going to get colder weather, but we're just fanning out. Basically, we have the fish house set up on the tip of the point. We're just kind of working our way in here and it comes up pretty sharp. That fish ate it. Fish on. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Just beautiful walleyes. Golly, they're just, this fishery is just continues to impress. Love this place. Now get that in the water. There she goes. Yeah, and I don't know, I suppose when it gets after dark here, we'll probably we'll probably make some food, get something to eat, and then uh, probably put a few tip-ups out here too and check them throughout the night, but there's nothing better than just sleeping wherever you're fishing, wherever you're catching fish like this. Just good as it gets. I love this. Love it. I'm just stroking that flutter spoon. I'm ripping it three, four feet off the bottom at times. If you don't have a lot of current to deal with, these walleyes out on Sakaka, we are here just love these flutter spoons. You know, this is a, a special area for me because this is kind of where I cut my teeth and, and really learned how to ice fish. You know, obviously I've been in Devil's Lake for many years, you know, and, and people think of me, you know, my history, you know, guide on Devil's Lake, you know, and, you know, guiding for walleyes and perch through the winter time. But before I, I came to Devil's Lake, you know, I was probably about 21 years old when I, when I came to Devil's Lake. And so before that, you know, I was fishing out here in Sakakawi and Lake Audubon and, and, you know, doing a lot of stuff on the Missouri River. You know, that's kind of where I grew up fishing. And this area is kind of where my passion for fishing started. And so Lake Sakakawi has just always been a special place for me. It's, it's always a place that I I can never come back to enough. And so many memories, you know, just, I met so many great anglers out here. And, you know, I think one of the real blessings for me as a, as a kid growing up with a passion for fishing is, you know, you look at Lake Sakakawi, at least at that time, there weren't a lot of people fishing, not, not nearly as many as there are now. So there's fewer people, but there are some really, really good anglers in this area. And I think one of the things that, that makes this reservoir somewhat unique compared to a lot of places in the country is that this lake's always changing. You know, it might drop 10 feet one year, it might come up 20 feet two years later. I mean, it's always changing. And so you've got nomadic fish that are moving a lot. You've got a reservoir that's changing where your favorite spot from last year is no longer relevant. And you get out in some of these areas where, you know, like right now we can't see a person within miles of us. We don't have anybody that we can, we can literally see three miles up and down the river. We can't see another person. And so, you know, it teaches you to, 
you know, to read maps and to, and to really learn how to find fish, you know, with your electronics and with mapping and, you know, all the tools that are available where you don't just pull up to a spot, see where five people are sitting and then go over and join them. I mean, there's nobody to join out here in a lot of cases. And so I think in that way, it, it, it forces you to learn some things that, you know, really help me with my fishing career. And so I've always, uh, I've always cherished this place. And to me, this is one of the most special places on the planet. Got a good one? Yeah, I think it'll be lunch. All right, well, we need those too. <laughs> Sauger. That's a little sauger, a little saw guy. that one for lunch. How many we got? Do we got two? Yeah, we've only kept, that'll be the second one we've kept. Okay. He came in nice and warm. Play a game of follow the leader while. There he is. Oh, this is a good fish. Gorgeous. Boy, look at that. Just all muscle. These fish are hitting it so hard too. That's part of the fun of this. Beautiful place. One of my favorite places on the planet. And these fish just come in and they just hit it. They just stop it. <laughs> Good living. I'm gonna keep that one. That's probably about an 18 and a half inch fish. We got to eat fish tonight, otherwise we're going to starve to death. And so Eric kept a couple. I'll keep that one and that'll be just a perfect meal. That's all we'll need. And definitely, you know, when you're out here like this, you, know, you definitely have to check your regulations, you know, as far as, you know, keeping fish. Obviously, whatever fish you eat, you know, counts towards your daily limit. And uh, in most states, you know, if you do eat fish on the ice, you clean them and eat them immediately. You don't clean them and put them in a bag and carry them around for a day or two. And then the other thing is you got to do something with the carcasses. And so we just bring garbage bags and uh, kind of do a pack it in, pack it out, keep the carcasses that way. We've got the carcasses to count towards our limit. And we're not littering on the ice, but uh, yeah, nothing better. Catching fish like this, staying right out on the ice, eating fish. I love these types of adventures. There we go. There we go. That fish surprised me. Oh, yeah. Come here. Oh, <laughs> does that count as a boat flip? Ribbon flutter spoon, just a minnow head. You just see how it's just got that wide profile, real thin, high action, just wobbles. These walleyes out here just love these. All right, well, that's another eater. Now we don't have to eat so many potatoes. What do you think, Eric? Should we uh, get settled in and yeah, I uh, think it's, uh, do some supper? I think it's about ready to start camping. <laughs> Ice camping, is that what they call this? <laughs> Good stuff. It's hard to quit fishing, you know what? Well, this is our base camp. This is our home away from home. And you see, we've got the cots laid out. We've got the rattle reels down. We've got some supper cooking and it's <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so, you know, if you do this ice camping, you know, like we're in the, we're in the JM 600 here, which you see it's got quite a bit of room. We've got our cots, we've got a rubber mat that we laid out on the floor, you know, and 
even brought a few, you know, brought shoes along for wearing inside the hub here. And we've got a folding table, you know, we're just using for cooking, which we can remove that outside of the fish house, you know, once we get done eating. But uh, we've got these hub lights, which, which slide right into your hub, which you can use these on any hub. And basically what it is, is just a plate that screws in and then these attachments just pop right in. And so they work really slick, just like that. And same thing with the rattle reels. The rattle reels mount right to the hub. And so real slick system. We've got our lighted bobbers. And yeah, this is our pantry up here. <laughs> and uh, goodness, I mean, you know, pretty simple camping, but uh, you know, we've got our pillows and sleeping bags and wet wipes and, you know, basically everything that we need, but we're comfortable in here. I mean, we could live out here for a long time till we run out of food. <laughs> we might not ever come back. We're gonna set out a few tip-ups here. I'm just gonna mark my depth with a, what I like to do is just take a rubber band, just tie an overhand knot. It's just a nice, easy way to mark your depth. And I'm gonna set it about a foot and a half off the bottom. while I resist that. All right, the trap is set. Oh, we got a flag here. It's not turning. It feels like there's a fish on it, though I didn't take very much line. Got him. Didn't take out very much line. Oh yeah, another nice sauger. Look at that. Oh, 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 look there, it's got a tag on it. Isn't that cool? What does that say? Montana Fish and Wildlife. Wow, this is out of Montana. We better keep that. Look at that. That's pretty cool. We're just going to see where this fish came from and learn a little bit more about it. That's a gorgeous sauger. You know, so you come out to Lake Sakakui, it's, it's kind of a classic one-two punch presentation in the sense that we're using some dead sticks with set lines, whether it's on tip-ups or rattle reels. And you know, a lot of times it's just a plain hook and a split shot, you know, with a, with a minnow. But on the other hand, you know, we are doing a lot of aggressive jigging. And some days, you know, the fish will come on, on jigging. Some days it's a mixture of both. You know, sometimes you might set up some tip-ups, for example, and maybe a flag keeps popping in, say, 25 feet of water, and you walk out into 25 feet of water, kick open another hole, and you know, and catch fish. And so all these different presentations complement each other. But as far as lures, you know, these fish are eating a lot of different things, but smelt is probably the primary forage. And so you look at your glide baits, like your tika minnows, and then your rattle spoons, especially after dark. You know, I like the rattle spoons. And then I love these flutter spoons. You know, like this ribbon flutter spoon, just a high action, thin spoon that has a lot of wobble and flash underwater. But those three presentations will catch you a lot of fish, you know, as far as jigging. White, pink, purple, blue. You know, a lot of your smelt light colors can be really good, but you know what? <laughs> Fire tiger, gold, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'll have my favorite colors, but if that's not working, don't be afraid to try something different, especially if you're marking fish that won't respond, you know. And so a lot of times, 
you know, the fish are near the bottom, you know, or you might be fishing, say, one to three feet up off the bottom, but you know what, if, if you see a mark come through it 10 feet up off the bottom, go after it, because sometimes these walleyes will come through at different depths, but, uh, you know, just a tremendous fishery. You can, you could fish a different point, a different spot every day of your life and still have more to learn. That's what's so amazing about this particular reservoir.